I know Quez dropped the church's money throughout the season, but ain't no way in hell we should get rid of him. But it is Philly Philly, what it do, baby? Your boy Miami Duff here back in the bitty to come holla at you. Yeah. Fresh faces in the bitty. New coordinators, everything looking good. We feeling good. We look about to be looking good. You know, Kelly Green is coming back this season. So, <laughs> you know, hey, as what Prime says, you look good, feel good, play good. When you play good, they pay good. And, you know, it hurts about to be a $200 million guy. You hear me? <laughs> Damn. Really want to see how the offense is going to look. You know, new look offense. You know, we're not going to, it's seeming as, and it's looking as, we're not going to resign Miles. You know, even though Miles was top five, top ten in every rushing statistic there is, you know, we definitely didn't, we definitely seem, seem that we're not, it seems like we're not going to resign him based on, you know, his performance in the Super Bowl and even throughout the playoffs, you know, you know, Gainwell was coming in and pretty much <laughs> wreaking havoc. You know, the man Miles only had seven touches this for the, in, in the Super Bowl game. So it's not, is you know, that's, that's not a good look for a guy that's, Looking for a new contract, you know, having only seven touches in the biggest game of your career. You know, granted, we, you know, we didn't really run the, run the ball with our running backs throughout the game. But, you know, just in general. Yeah, he put on great tape this year that, you know, he could be a durable back. He can play all 16 games. You know, he can stay healthy. You know, he could hit the holes. He could bounce it to the outside, catch out the backfield. So he put good tape on. So, you know, for all other 31 teams. But, you know, it seems as though he's not going to be a fit for Philly. You know, I mean, it looked like it's going to be a Kenneth, Kenneth Gainwell show. You know, it, it's time for Gainwell to, you know, put his big boy pants on and come out there and do what he need to do. You know, <clears throat> as you uh, as we all can see, the Gainwell is a more explosive back than Miles. And I'm going to just call it spade to spade. Don't get me wrong. Miles can get jiggy with the best of them. But Miles, but Gainwell just have that burst and he has that acceleration where he can uh -uh, make that one two cut, you know, things of that nature and get to the. And get to the second level quickly and faster than Sam, quicker than quicker and faster than Miles. You know, ain't he a better you know catching the ball out of the backfield? He's better. He's better at that than Miles. So you know, it's definitely gonna it's definitely gonna be different. Not to see that two six on Miles, but he, you know, is <laughs> it's a performance based business. So you know, we definitely gotta Miles gotta find somewhere. You know, find a new home. You know. And game well, let's get ready. And, you know, seems as, as, you know, the draft is coming up, you know, I definitely want us to go out there and go get Alabama running back, that number one. For some strange reason, for some strange reason, when I watch him, I see a lot of Alvin Kamara. And I know for my football fans, and definitely watch this, the game, see a lot of similarities in the two. Run hard, catches the ball well out of the backfield, and run in between the tackles. He reminds me, his running style is, is exactly like Alvin Kamara. So, you know, hopefully in the draft we can go out there and trade, maybe not trade for him, but pick him up in the draft, whether it's first round, second round, or whatever, you know, wherever he's at, hopefully we can go out there and go get him so he can be a good running back committee and everything. But now, we about to get into, you know, my intro of what I said. Quez did drop the church's money a lot this season. He did. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I, I like to give it to you blood raw. He did drop the church's money a lot. But, but we know I don't want to. I'm not going to ridicule the man. I'm not going to talk bad about the man game and the man performance this past season. He had a down year this year. He did. I'm gonna call it what it is. He did take a back seat because you know we got AJ and then Vontae uh, Smitty was going stupid. AJ was going stupid. You know, set the franchise record. So you know, and then got Goddard before he got hurt. He was going crazy too. So you know, we had a lot of guys going bonkers. You know, so he's definitely going to take a back seat. Of course that, and you know the drops is gonna come as a part of the game. You know, I wish it wasn't as frequent. You know, especially in the in the Super Bowl. You know, you gotta have those. Gotta have those. It's the biggest game of the year, so we gotta have those. So I definitely understand. But you know, just fans and um, you know the whole Twitter world and everybody is just ridiculing the man, talking bad about the man name and the man game. And because he had one down year and one bad year, I'll take him over Riley Cooper. I'll take him over Kevin Curtis. Granted, Kevin Curtis had that one year in 07 when he went for a thousand plus. After that, Dookie. <laughs> he wasn't he he was not productive. He was not a good he was not a good receiver after that one year. Same as with Riley Cooper. He didn't even touch a thousand yards, none in his career. His short stint that he had in the league, I believe his his he played like six, seven years in the league. He never touched a thousand yards. And we still kept him on the squad. 
So why are we even talking about trading away Quez Watkins because of a down year? No, nah, only way you trade him if you can get some valuable out assets out of him. The man can still take the top off of defense. He can still he did make big catches throughout the entire season. Uh, excuse me, last season and and things of that nature. You know, bailing out our offense whenever it's third and eighteen, third and fourteen. I mean, coming up with big catches. So you know, I don't I don't want to give that away. I don't want to give that speed still away. No, it's definitely good to have that. He can stretch the field, and he's a he's a good route runner. He get in and out of his breaks. So you don't want to trade a guy like that that's still in his prime. The man is only twenty four years old. Come on, now get a man some get a man some wiggle room. Get a man the ability to be able to to continue to mature in his game and continue to get better. Then if he doesn't produce how you want to produce, then hey, do what you do what you gonna do, boss. Definitely. I definitely agree. So, but if you're gonna keep guys like Kevin Curtis, I understand it's blast from the past, but still you had guys that wasn't productive, unproductive guys on the roster for years that wasn't doing anything. And you telling me we took we we're, we're thinking about trading him? Come on, now be serious. Let's just be real, man. We kept on saying a white side. We drafted him in the second round for what? He did at least quite. I don't even think he's in the league now. And you talking about getting rid of Quest? Like nah, nah. The man had a down year, but man, this year is gonna be epic. If we if we retain Quest or and, and everything, this is gonna be a breakout year for him. This is definitely gonna be an epic year for him coming up. Especially, you know, we show him that we trust him. We show him that we show him that love, that camaraderie, and things of that nature. He's definitely going to be a force to reckon with for this season, man. Do not trade Quez. Quez is a viable asset to our offense. He's definitely can stretch and open up everything, especially with our new offense coordinator. He's going to stretch and open up the offense for us. So do not trade Quez, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. But this your boy, Miami Delphia. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment.